Well, hello, hello. Lunch is served. <laughs> Come on in to our table, to our time, uh, to the moments we've created together and planned for. We are ready to rumble. It is a little after 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Come on in. And for some, it's lunch, some it's dinch, some it's brunch, but nevertheless, we are ready to do this. We are ready. All right, I'm having to come in. All right, Chicago is here and in the scope. Excited to have you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Prophetess Don, you are awesome to me. I appreciate you. Bowie, Maryland, to my helper, my supporter. I appreciate you, woman of God. The, uh, just the, the, all the McElwains. I just want to bless all the whole household. Wonderful. Virginia is here. What are you cooking up? Something good? Be surprised. It's coming, but it's going to be hot and it's going to be right. Pastor Benjamin, blessings to you, woman of God. Memphis, Tennessee is here, ready for the solutions. All right, we've got some for you. I am well. I am up. I am focused. I am uh, I'm determined. I guess that's just the word. Boston, Atlanta, love you too. Thank you so very much. Thank Thank you all. Marietta, Georgia. My sister lives in that region. Oh, Bahamas is here. Blessings to you, Chicago. Pat, I think that's from Mississippi. And uh, oh, good, from Carmina Apostle. Glad to have you, California. Do you like non-believers? Love non-believers. I love non-believers. Do you know why? Because non-believers are just needing to know what to believe so that they can do go to new levels. Non-believers are just folks who, like I was, a non-believer. We all have been, we were born non-believers, so, but we have to know where our former lives were. What was the, the life before? What was before we awoke uh, out, of, out of the matrix? What was it before when we were plugged in? So we're excited about believers. Let's see. Uh, yes, it is an opportunity. Uh, so thirsty for the word. Wow. We're going to serve lots of water and lots of juice today from the fruit of the spirit. Thank you. All right. Oh God, I love <laughs> we love non-believers. I love that. I came back again. Don't forget where we came from, right? Uh, I, we were singing on Sunday. Let me just say this uh, as I welcome you into the scope and give others time and definitely invite folks. Do what you do. You can tap the number. You can do all kinds of things, swiping and, and tapping, uh, but get some folk at the table so we can uh, enjoy lunch together. But this is what we were singing in our prophetic uh, song on Sunday, and it just took me to the floor. I went to the floor. I am the apostle and I'm the one who leads and the visionary, but I was on the floor worshiping with these words. I remember. I remember the conversation. I remember the call. I remember what it was like when you were first speaking to me. I remember. And those words, those words alone, I remember God. I remember what you said. I remember the day you called. I remember the promises. And so no matter what life tries to dish up to make us feel like it's not going to work, we feel frustrated, we feel tired, we feel over surfeited, overburdened, just remember. <laughs> you got to remember. You got to remember before time. You got to remember way back when, uh, even as women on Saturday, women go through so much before the hurt, before the pain, before the divorce, before uh, the children, before remember when you were little and you re you had the dreams. You can't remember. You can't forget that. So always remember. I'm still welcoming people. Please forgive me. I just got to tell. I had to just get that out about remembering. So yes, yes, yes. Everybody is remembering. I'm thanking you all for being here. I'm blessed uh, for the opportunity. Oh, thank you for your time. Okay. Love your, oh, love your coaching. Thank you so much. Coaching is like, uh, it's become a second nature to me. I just feel like there is so much that needs to happen as we develop a new generation of, of men and women, boys and girls to go to new levels. We talk new levels. We preach new levels. We're always, you know, putting it out in the atmosphere, but how do you get there? How do you take it? You take your turn. How do you move, uh, to the next scale. How do you do new levels? So coaching really helps that. Bronx, New York. Welcome, welcome to you. All right, blessings to you. I guess you got to go, boo-boo, because you just don't know what to do here. You don't know how to be polite. You have to be polite when you come to somebody's dinner table. Come on, learn some home manners if you don't know nothing else, right? So we have to learn to do that. We've got to learn how to scale. We've got to learn how to move and to take that next level. So that becomes critical for us to learn to do that. 
that. Uh, so that's what we're learning on this scope. So as you come in, welcome, welcome, welcome to Power Scope Coaching Scope uh, with Yolanda Powell. And I am clear that we are moving you uh, and pushing you up to new levels, up to the top of mountains. Here on this scope, we're talking about the seven mountains. We're talking about family, education, religion, business, uh, what's it, arts and entertainment, media, government. We're talking about all of those those movers and shakers that really have molding, um, manipulating power over our thoughts and over our actions. So as believers, as those who understand who Christ Jesus is, we want to get our stamina, we want to get our our stealth. We want to get our swagger for knowing how to be on those mountains. If that's where the influence in is, then we need to be the influencers. If that's where the power is, then we need to be the power brokers, right? So, all right, we're not going to go along with all of our appetizers. We're getting right to our meat and potatoes today, so you, we won't tarry too long uh, because I know you're doing lunch or dinch or brunch, and that means other things are to follow. But listen, listen, listen. Today, this afternoon, we're still in violent week, even though I'm smiling. Look, I'm smiling, but I'm still violent, right? I'm smiling, but I still go cut you. <laughs> I will cut you. And I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about me. I'm looking back at me in the mirror, the woman in the mirror, the man in the mirror. And I'm saying, even you, I will cut. Not just the adversaries, not just the enemies, not just the issues and not just the situations, but I sometimes need to learn how to take a cut. Come on here. I got to learn how to take a hit, right? I got to learn how to apply the pressure. Why? To my own self, to my own psyche, to my own being. Why do I need to learn that? Because I have to learn, I have to learn how to hear the voice of God from my own self to my own self. <laughs> I can't speak to everybody else and command every other demonic thing and take authority over external situations and I won't, I won't obey the voice of God in me. Uh oh, okay, come on, tap, 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 tap. Come on, come on, eat first bite, take your bite. First bite, you've got to be able to take your own advice when that advice is the anointing, anointed word of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, many times we can tell everybody else, come on, make me, <laughs> make, make here, me here for me. I like that. Me here for me. I need to hear for me. So I can't be giving y'all all the advice and Yolanda Powell going down the drain. Come on, Paul said, wait a minute, lest, hmm, hashtag lest when I have preached to others, I myself become a castaway. Why? Because I didn't hear me. <laughs> I didn't hear me. I heard, I heard God. Yes, I heard God. I, I, I shared God with everybody else. I loved God in the prayer room. But when it came to actually implementing the things that God was saying, I didn't take my own advice. I didn't hear my own counsel. Now, when I say my own, I'm not saying my own mind. I'm saying out of my own mouth that God speaks through me. He speaks through you. But many times he's speaking through us uh, to us. He's speaking through us, still to us. We are not exempt. We don't get to be outside of the council. We don't get to be outside of the coaching of Christ. We do not get, <laughs> we don't get the, the, the pass. There's no pass here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this slicing and dicing that we're doing today is to create change. It is to create opportunity. It is to create the next level. That's what we're coaching about today. We're not just slicing and dicing to slice and dice. We're getting violent violent with the things in us that are keeping us from forward movement and systemic change. That's what we're doing. We're applying the sword of the spirit to our own disobedience. Watch this. To our own radical disobedience because we're saying, as I said uh, many, many, many moons ago, it's been some moons ago that I said, well, I don't know who you think you are, Yolanda Powell, but you will not disobey God. You will not hear a prophetic word from God and still keep stepping in the same old shoes, doing the same old thing, going the same old way. I had to stop me and apply the sword of the spirit to my own soul, the sword of the spirit to my own sense of resistance to God. And that's what I'm saying to you today. We get violent with me. Say, get violent with me. I need to get violent with me. I know I'm doing all the other stuff, but I got to get violent with Yolanda 
good. And you need to get violent with you. I'm putting my thing in your face. Woo. Come on here. Boom. And so we need to know that, that we have to do this. Now, listen, this getting heated thing and frustrated thing that we've been constantly living on and living in. I said on and in. We're on top of frustration. Frustration is on top of us. And then it's also inside of us. That's too much. Frustrated with all of these elements. But literally, we are frustrated with ourselves. We are frustrated because we are saying Oh, if I had my degree, I wouldn't be in this job. Okay. If you had a degree, you wouldn't be in this job. When are you going to get it? When are you going to lay the sword to your own fear, your own resistance, your own rebellion, and stop saying, I wish I had or I don't like, and not changing? Hmm. We're talking about slicing and dicing to create change. Change where? Change within. Change inside. Change internally. Change in me. Me, hear me. Come on here. Me, hear me. Come me, hear God. All right? So if me hear God, then me need to hear God speaking to me. All right. And so this is critical. So this heated thing is when we uh, the temperature of life is raised against us. We are upset with everybody about everything because nothing is going right. And here is the place where the sword must be applied and the slice and dice must be mm, penetrating. It means that if I'm heated and I'm hot and I'm tired and I'm weary and I'm worn, then I need to ask the hard question, why? Why are you hot? Why, why are you heated? What, what, what are your expectations? What did you expect them to do? How did you expect them to please you? How did you expect them to make you feel? Why did you give them so much responsibility for your own feelings? Why did you make it such a caveat that they had to do everything to make you feel better about you? Ooh, that old oh, hard. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this is this is the hard thing for real folk who want to take action, who want to do notes. Let's say ouch. <laughs> say ouch, but ooh. Say ouch, but ooh, because the ouch is all right for a minute long as the ooh is applied. The ooh is applied. And so this is what we're learning. The, here it is that we have to reduce the fever of frustration by cutting it with calm cool understanding and a consistent plan of action. If we want to bring the temperature down on our life, we want to get out of the heat zone. We want to top, stop being frustrated. We want folk to leave us alone and get out our face and stop agitating us. Then we've got to do a, we've got to do a movement. Come on, we got to do a movement. Y'all do this with me. We got to do a movement. We got to switch the way we've been expecting this thing to go. And we got to go back another way. And that way that we're going back is to take the sword of the spirit and apply it to, our, to ourselves. Now, if we're asking ourselves these questions, and I've got to be clear about my time because I really want to get clear with you. That if this is a, a, a heated, fevered element that keeps coming, that I'm frustrated because I, I'm tired of riding the bus. Oh, you tired of riding the bus? So what you going to do about it? Uh, I'm just tired of riding the bus. Oh, well, well, wait a minute now. If you're tired of riding the bus, that means you want to do something different. What do you want to do? Well, I want a car. Well, how are you going to get the car? What are you going to do? What action are you? Why are you mad at the bus driver? Why are you mad at everybody on the bus? Why by the time you get to work, you frustrated with everybody in the office? Why you why you under breath cussing? Come on, be let's be real. Cause you riding the bus, but you're not taking any action to get the car. car. This is what I'm saying to you. This is critical that you not keep putting all your energy outside. Come on, bring it in. Bring the cut in. Say, cut me, Jesus. <laughs> cut me, Holy Ghost. Cut me. Because I need the cut. Now, this morning, I heard the Spirit of the Lord bring me to Psalm 119. And this is what David said. David understood how what, what the frustrations were like. David understood what it was like to be saying, I love God, but I ain't doing what he said. And David said this. These are his words. Psalm 119, verse 70. I think it's 71. It says this. I was glad that I was afflicted. Mm. I, I, I got happy I was afflicted because then, then I began to understand your statutes. See, affliction and frustration 
brought me to a place where I said, oh, oh Lord, I got to apply something here. I'm not making the application. I'm not applying what I'm hearing. I'm not implementing what you're saying. I'm, I'm talking like I know something, but I ain't doing nothing with my feet. I'm talking out my mouth, but I ain't putting it in action with my hands. I'm talking like I really am the believer of believers. Oh, God, for the God I live, God I die. But I'm frustrated because I'm not doing the one, two, three, four, five, six things, seven, eight, that will make the difference and bring me to a place of, of shalom, a place of joy, a place of, of fruitfulness, a place of at the end of the day, I rest. I don't, I don't struggle in the night. All right. So critical. What do I want to change? Number one, if you ask, what do I want to change? And you're able to answer that, then you must ask, what steps do I take? So change has steps. You can't have change unless you do something. Change is not external. Change is internal. What do I want to achieve? Second question. What do I want to achieve? Hmm. If I want to achieve something, how do I take action? So for change, it's steps. For achievement, it's actions. You've got to have actions and steps for change and achievement. They go together. They are grooved in together. So I can't expect change. I can't expect to achieve and don't take steps and don't take action, right? Am I talking right? Change by achievement. Yes, those two go together. Their achievement comes with change. Change is a, is a movement of achievement. You can't have that. You can't say, I want to I wanna be better and not do uh huh. What it takes, uh huh, to be. You gotta, you gotta do to be. And then once you be, you can do something different. But they go together, do and be. All right. The, the, the ultimate question though is not how do I want to change or what do I want to change and what do I want to achieve? Watch this. This is the question. This is the question, ladies and gentlemen. The question is how do I want to feel? Oh, Lord. Now, you're going to say, Dr. Yolanda, that don't make no sense. This is about doing. You just told us. Yeah, I said you got to do certain things like take steps and you got to have some action. But really, to get there, it's not about those specific steps and all that action. Do you know why? Because we can make lists all day long and say, these are the steps. You can send me an email in five minutes after we get off and say, these are the 15 steps I'm going to take. These are the two steps I'm going to take. And you may or may not do them. Why? Because they're just steps. They have nothing to do with anything about what you feel. I usually can say, okay, these are my action steps for the next six weeks. This is what I'm going to do, Dr. Yolanda. And I'm going to say, oh, good. Why? Wonderful. Let, let's see what you do. I'm going to, I'm going to listen and look at you, but on the back of my head, I'm going to say, none of that's going to matter until I know, and you know how it makes you feel. You see, we do things based on what we feel. When it feels like I feel the joy of the Lord, we get up and go to church. When we feel like the peace of God, oh, comes on me. When I get in that bathtub, then we take our little bath. It's about feeling. It's we go towards things because of what it makes us feel. I'm getting married. It makes me feel like I'm the most important woman in the world. See, it's feeling. So a lot of us been trying to do the actions and take the steps. We're not really understand what's the feeling that's going to be produced that I really want. I want peace. Hallelujah. I want peace. So I will do. I will stop the fight. I will get in the middle of the blow. I will do whatever it takes because what do I want to feel? I want to feel peace. So it's not this action step of stepping in between the fight. That's just what you do to get to the feeling you want. <laughs> Am I helping y'all? All right. See, we have to understand that this is about that feelings that we want to produce. See, the feeling is the production movement. It is the production thing that happens. I like that. It is, to, it is the movement that brings us there. So listen, here it is. If we want um, to, to, to get up in the morning and not be frustrated every time because we don't have a pair of black patent leather shoes, then just go buy them. Why? Because it's not, well, not that you want the shoe. You want the way it make you feel. It make me feel less frustrated. It make me feel good that I have it in place when I need it. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to beat myself up. Feel. How does it make you feel? See, frustration was a sense of feeling that didn't get placed right. 
It didn't have the thing it wanted to grab onto. So frustration was there. So when we replace frustration with the proper feelings that we need to have in our inventory, in our, in, in, in our closet, in our desk drawer, in our, in our personal refrigerator at work, wherever it is, that's what's going to do it. So here's what I want you to do. It's not how much skin you put in the game. It's what skin you want to feel when the game is over. <laughs> what you want to feel like when the game is done it's not that I want to put I want to I want to take steps to put my feet on the pavement no it's what you want to feel like when your feet touch the pavement how you going to feel when it's over how you going to feel in the middle how you going to feel at the moment see it's about the feeling you're looking for it's the way we're wired God put us that way we got all kind of dopamines and all kind of all stuff I don't know the names of them but they are the way we feel that's why people do drugs that's why people are addicts it's why people like sex it's why people like worship it's like people like dance it's why people write books it's why people create they're creating change because they're looking for the feeling that it produced not just the the act, not just the reward, not just the thing, not a car, not a clothes, not a man, not a position. It's the feeling. Come on, get get to the feeling. What do you want to feel like? What are you what are you after in the feeling of that thing? That's what's going to make you go. That's what's going to push you out. That's what's going to get you going. So I'm bringing this to an end. We prioritize not by lists. We prioritize by feeling. In my business, I want to feel accomplished. I want to feel at the end of the day that I, di I did the most important thing today. I didn't do 15. I didn't do seven. I didn't even do my top three. I just did the one thing that made me feel like I did all of it. What's that? What's that? That's the question. What is that feeling at the end of the day that I'm not stressed, that I'm not frustrated, that I'm saying, you just talking all this talk. You ain't did jack today. You ain't got nothing done. No, I won't do that. I want the feeling of, you know what? I did. I did make that call. I, I did write that letter. I, I did just put those pieces together and put them in the file. That's it. I'm done. I feel good. I feel good today. Come on. How you feel? I feel good today. How you feel? Let me ask the question. How you feel today? How you feel? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. How you feel? What What are you? How are you feeling today? Accomplishment. Good. Let me hear. Let me see. I feel good. Spreading love. All right. Let's go. I, I did accomplish something. Good. 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 All right. I'm reading. I feel blessed. Uh, what is the feeling I'm looking for? You gotta ask that. That's a hashtag. I feel strong. I feel blessed. I feel clear. I feel energized. I feel good. I feel inspired. I feel charged. These are the things that will keep you coming. Keep you going. Keep you moving. These are the elements. And then if you keep seeking for that, you won't get frustrated because I feel I feel charged. So what am I going to do? <laughs> I want to keep feeling charged. I'm going to do things that align with being charged. I feel blessed. So I'm going to align myself, not in sin, but in those things that bring blessing. So we go with our feeling until we understand how to mature things. And even when we get to there, it's still going to be, I feel good. I feel excited. I feel greatness. I feel power. I feel. Come on. That's what's going to keep me going. So listen, this is not about anything else but these top three things. This is what we're slicing. This is what we're doing. We slice pride. We don't, we don't, we don't, we do not say I don't need anything or I know I got to have something. We just say, you know what? I'm in need. Oh Lord, oh Lord, it's me, it's me standing in the need of change. So we know that part of this violence is pride in me that says I can fake it till I make it. I can try to do it without feeling. I can try to just do stuff and put lists together. That's the frustration. It's the frustration with myself and it's the frustration with others. So slice pride. It's a part of creating change. Another one is slice expectation. It's not about them. It's not outside of you. Slice that thing that says I'm expecting too much from too many people in too many places and that's why I keep getting frustrated. Bring it on home, baby. Bring it in here. Just keep it in here. Expectation? No. David said my expectation was only in the Lord. <laughs> my expectation is only in the Lord. Have expectation in nothing, in nobody, in nowhere, now at all. Expectation only upstairs, only inside, only in God, only in Christ. Number three, slice disappointment. You choose to act 
and create change by understanding the feeling that it will be produced. So you will not be disappointed because you are the architect. You are the designer of what you want. You know the feeling that brings you the best results, that puts you in the game, that causes you to soar, that causes you to move. Then keep creating that feeling. If you create the feeling, things will get in the place. And you'll know I'm creating this because this is what it makes me feel like at the end of the day. This is what it makes me feel like in the middle of the morning. I gotta stop. All right. So you got that? Those are just coaching tactics and coaching pieces. We're slicing pride, slicing expectation, slicing the potential disappointment because we're bringing everything internal. We're not trying to put it out in the, in the ozone. We're not trying to put it out in the universe. We're not trying to put it out in our church family. We're not putting it on our husband or our wife. We're making it personal. And we're making it between two people, God and me, expectation only. And the feeling that I have, the feeling that I want, the feeling that is associated with that change and that achievement is what's going to get me to my destination. All right. So this is exciting. I'm so glad that we've been able to impart this. Has this helped you all? Okay. Yeah. You got to make it personal. You got to keep it in here. Don't make those elements of feelings about everybody else. It's just about you. You know what you need. You know what you want. You a big girl. You got your big stuff on. Come on. You a, you a big guy. You understand what you carry and you understand what you packing, sir. So you don't have to make the others responsible for your own feelings. All right. For your own change and for your own achievement. God will tell you, he will show you and you will walk in that thing upright. It is about you, but it's not a selfish about you. It is a knowing about you. The Bible says in all you're getting, get an understanding know what you carry, know what you like, know what gets you moving, know what gets you packing. And don't make lists because lists are just things. Make feelings, make feelings, create feelings, not just things, not just opportunities. Create feelings and opportunities will flow. All right. Blessings, blessings, blessings to you. Listen, uh, we are going to be back on Friday. I know I said it last Friday and I didn't because we had so many things, but I surely, surely, surely got to tell you about July 29th. Y'all got to ask me about July 29th. I'm going to tell you, but I'm not going to tell you today. I'm telling you on Friday about July 29th, what I am kicking off here in Washington, D.C. And if you can, I want you to be there. I want you to come. But I'm just saying July 29th, July 29th. I'm just say it like that. And then on Friday, I'll jump on the scope. I'll tell you more about that. And I still must thank some people. I still must read some of the testimonials. So we'll just do a testimonial time. I don't know what time that will be, but I will be back on Friday to do that. I got to tell you about July 29th, but I've also got to tell you about some great things that are happening in people's lives. So have a great day, a great rest of the week, and we will come back on Friday with some good, good, good news, some good, good opportunities, and some great feelings. I'll be sharing my great feelings with you at that time. All right, blessings to you. Have a great rest of the day, and know that shalom blessings, feelings of peace surround you. Bye-bye.